Hello, a very good morning to everybody. So we are going to continue with the discussion for Chapter 6A, Chemical Equilibrium, where we are entering to the part of Section B. So before we begin, if you like this video, help me to click the like button. And if you want to receive further no notification about my upcoming videos, uh, click subscribe and click the notification buttons for, for to receive the latest information. Okay, so with the next session, let's begin our lesson, shall we? Okay, so we are going to continue with the section B, which is the structure questions for chemical equilibria, starting from question number one. Contact process is used widely to produce sulfuric acid, uh, which has a wide variety of applications. The crucial step to determine the yield is described in the following steps. We have 2SO2 plus O2 give 2SO3, delta H is negative 198 kilojoule. At a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius and 12 atmosphere, the system is in the state of dynamic equilibrium. Explain what is meant by the terms dynamic equilibrium. So this is a very common definition where uh, most of the SDPMs love to ask students about what is a dynamic equilibrium. So these are the definitions that you have to know on how to uh, define it. Where you have to mention that when chemical reaction is ongoing, that shows that it's the dynamic concentration of the product and reactant become constant at the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of backward reactions. So this is how you should define a dynamic equilibrium for chemical equilibrium. Okay, so try your best to remember this. Huh? Okay, B, name the catalyst used for the above step. So because the question used the word name, so you have to name, you cannot use the formula. So you have to write it as vanadium 5 oxide. But at the same time, we accept a platinum and also palladium as the answers in here. Okay. Okay, number two, explain why the catalyst stated in one do not alter the equilibrium position for the steps in contact process. So there is this uh, part where they say that if the catalyst is gas, it might influence the position of equilibrium because when you have gaseous species with gaseous species, it can alter the position of equilibrium. However, all vanadium oxide, platinum and palladium solid are solid catalysts. So that is why it will not influence the position of equilibrium. Okay, so either you say that because the catalyst use is in solid, or you say that because the catalyst use a heterogeneous catalyst. Let's see, an analysis of the equilibrium mixture obtained from mixing sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, oxygen are shown of shows a composition of 40% of sulfur trioxide when the total pressure of the system is 15 atmosphere. Number one, calculate the partial pressure of the sulfur dioxide and oxygen. So uh, in here, you should know that uh, if the total composition of the sulfur trioxide is 40%, that means sulfur oxide and oxygen is 60%. And we know that the ratio of the sulfur dioxide to oxygen is 2 to 1. So this will make the sulfur dioxide and oxygen to be 2 over 3 times 60 over 100 multiplied by 15 atmosphere, while the partial pressure of the oxygen will be 1 over 3 times 60 over 100 multiplied by 15 atmosphere. So at the end, you get the partial pressure of the sulfur dioxide is 6 atmosphere, while oxygen is 3 atmosphere. And finally, calculate the partial pressure of the reaction. So you have to first express the equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium constant of the partial pressure. Kp equals to PSO3 square over PSO2 square multiplied by partial pressure of oxygen. So you substitute each accordingly. So you have um, uh, this uh, 6.0 square over 6.0 square divided by 3.0. So you get Kp is equals to 0 0.33 in two significant figures, I can I believe. Okay, so this is a very direct question. So hopefully you'll be able to understand how to solve this. So this is for question number one. Then we continue to question number two. Haber process is used in the industrial to production of ammonia. The reaction of equation is shown below where you have N2 plus 3H2 give 2 NH3, delta H is negative 92 kilojoule per mole. At temperature for 450 degrees Celsius, pressure 200 atmosphere, the system is in the state of dynamic equilibrium. Explain what is meant by the terms dynamic equilibrium. So I believe that I've already explained just now. So you have to try your best to remember when you say that concentration of reactor and product are constant, yet the reaction is still ongoing at the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of back reactions. Then B, an analysis of an equilibrium mixture obtained from mixing gaseous nitrogen and hydrogen shows composition of 20% ammonia when the total pressure of the system is 50 atmosphere. Right expression for the equilibrium constant Kc from the above equilibrium. So you have Kp equals to um, partial pressure of NH3 squared divided by partial pressure of N2 multiplied by partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. Number two, calculate the mole fraction of nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia. Since uh, ammonia is made of 20%, so uh, hydrogen uh, and nitrogen is made of 80%. So out of this 80%, 
uh, in the ratio of one to three, nitrogen is 0 0.2 while hydrogen is 0 0.6. Number three, calculate the partial pressure of the nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia. So you use the formula PN2 equals, uh, partial pressure of nitrogen equals to mole fraction multiplied by the total pressure. So you have 0 0.2 multiplied by 15 atmosphere, and then hydrogen 0 0.6 multiplied by 15 equals nine atmosphere. Ammonia is 0 0.2 times 15, which is also equals to three atmosphere. And calculate the KP for the reaction. So you substitute 3.0 square over 3.0 multiplied by 9.0 cube. So at the end, you get 0 0.11 atmosphere minus two. So beware of the units used in here, yeah? Okay, so with that, that is for question number two. Then we have question number three. Gaseous phosphorus pentachloride is heated and decomposed to form phosphorus trichloride gas and chlorine gas. Study shows that the W change of the decomposition of phosphorus pentachloride is 120 kJ more. A. Write the decomposition equation for the phosphorus pentachloride. So this one students must know by yourself because the question also already says that you become phosphorus trichloride and chlorine gases. So you should be able to write a balance equation based on that. So the equation is PCL5 give PCL3 plus Cl2. B, 15.0 gram of phosphorus pentachloride were placed in a steel evacuated vessel of a capacity 1.00 times 10 power negative 3 meter cube and then heated to 473 Kelvin. Pressure was found to have to increase to 3.10 times 10 power of 5 Pascal. So in here, if you look carefully, all the figure in here shows three significant figures, which indicates that the final answer should also be three significant figures. One, based on the equation in A, uh, express the equilibrium constant for the decomposition of phosphorus pentachloride. So Kp is equal to PCL3 times PCL2 over PCL5. Then number two, using ideal gas equation, calculate the total mole of the mixture gas, 473. So you use Kv equals to NLT, then you substitute 3.10 times 10 to the power of 5, multiply by 1.00, because we are given in decimeter cube, you have to change the meter cube. So from decimeter cube to meter cube, you have to multiply. Okay, so are we going to uh, rewind a bit back there? Sorry for that. Okay, so I'm going to repeat. Okay, so you use ideal gas equation, PV equals to NLT. So to calculate the total mole of the mixture. So N is equals to 3.10 times 10 power of five. So it's 310 kilopascal. So you have to be careful huh, with the kilopascal there. And then the volume is given to you is in decimeter cube. So you have to convert to meter cube, multiply by 10, 10 power of negative three, and then divided by RT, 8.31 and 473. So press your calculator, you should get your normal of mole is 0 0.0789. Three, calculate the partial pressure of phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus trichloride, and chlorine gas. So after you get the mole, you can calculate the mole fraction. So mole of PCL5 initial is 15 uh, divided by uh, 31 plus 15. So you get 0 0.719. So uh, uh, eventually you need to, um, okay, uh, let me complete the, this one. Uh, the, 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 the answer for you. Okay, so uh, after you get the total mole in here, so uh, uh, since uh, uh, this uh, uh, what PCL5 decomposed to become uh, PCL3 plus CL2, so uh, you have a uh, uh, 7.89 total mole, 0 0.0789, which is the total mole, is equals to the total mole of the, this one, 0 0.0719 minus x, because psychometrically is one to one to one. Then you form uh, x amount of the uh, PCL3 plus x amount of the CL2. So eventually you get your x is equals to, you see the calculator. Sorry for that, right? because I didn't complete the calculation for you. So 0 0.0789 minus 0 0.079. You get 0 0.079. Right? So uh, mole of the PCL5 is equals to uh, 0, 0.0. 719 and then uh, PCL3 which is equals to CL2 which is equals to 0 0.007 mole 
Okay. Uh, so partial pressure. Okay, so the partial pressure in here will be, so you have to calculate uh, separately in here. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so uh, after that, you calculate uh, the P for, uh, partial pressure of the PCL5 will be equals to 0 0.0719 divided by total mole 0 0.0789 multiplied by the P total 3.10 and 10 power of 5. I think this one I already done it later part, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, I continue. Maybe of the reaction. Oh, okay, I show it here, I show it here. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so uh, I did shows you, and then uh, this is a PCL5, okay, then this is a PCL3, which is equals to PCL2, okay, I thought I didn't do, huh? okay, never mind. Uh, so that you calculated, then you get your KB is equals to 2.75 times 10 power negative 4 square over 2.55 times 10 power 5, so you get 2.97 times 10 power 3 Pascal. So that is how you calculate the, the KB for the reactions. Huh? So uh, this is the technique of how to calculate KB, huh? So first of all, you must find the mole at equilibrium for each species inside here, the reactant and the product. After you calculate the mole, then sum up the total mole. After you get the total mole, you have to calculate the mole fraction, hence the partial pressure of, this one, uh, of the reactant and products involved. Then uh, only then you can start to apply KP here. So uh, for more information, you can always revise back to my old YouTube videos on how to calculate KC and KP. Yeah? I've already shown you very clearly. Okay, so please refer back to that. Thank you. Okay, then number four, consider the reaction CH3COH plus C2H5 gives CH3COO C2H5 plus H2O. So 0 0.50 mole of ethanol acid was shaken with 1.00 mole of ethanol until equilibrium was reached. The whole mixture was then titrated with 1.00 mole of sodium hydroxide where the alkali was required in the titration. Okay, so in this case, because you have excess uh, ethanol, uh, ethanol acid, so they will use this uh, uh, alkali to neutralize it. Okay, A, why was the reaction, uh, reaction titrate quickly? It is because the position do not change because uh, when you use uh, sodium hydroxide, there might be changes, there might be chances for the ester to be um, hydrolyzed in here. So that is why it needs to be quick, okay? Okay, and then number two, uh, Number two, using the data given, calculate the number of moles of ethanol acid that remain in equilibrium. So you use uh, PV equals, uh, you use PV equals there. Mole equals to MV over 1,000. So you get uh, 1.00 times 80 over 1,000. So you get 0 0.08 mole. Then the amount of mole of ethanol acid. So you have uh, 0 0.05 minus the mole reacted. 0 0.08, you get 0 0.42. And the mole of ethanol left in the equilibrium mixture. So originally you have 1.00. You, you minus by 42, you get 0 0.58 mole. Okay. So at the end, how do you calculate Kc? So Kc is equals to CH3CO C2H5. So in this case, again, the water is considered inside our equilibrium because water is formed, not water used as the reactant. So it must be calculated in this case. Okay, so you have 0 0.42 divided by V, multiplied by 0 0.42 divided by V over 0 0.08 divided by V and 0 0.58 divided by V. So don't, in this case, you don't have to worry about the volume of the vessel because eventually the volume and volume, they can cancel off each other. So at the end, you get Kc equals to 3.80 in three significant figure. So that is how you solve for question number four. Last but not least, question number five. Table process is used to carry out on the temperature approximately 400 degrees Celsius in the presence of catalyst. Changes in the temperature affect both rate of product of ammonia and the yield of ammonia. Postman distribution for a mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen is shown below with the activation energy. So this is the, uh, this is the profile. So A, based on the Bos uh, Boltzmann distribution graph, use the same axis to sketch a second curve to indicate Boltzmann distribution at a higher temperature. So in here, you must be very smart huh, to know how to sketch the 
uh, temperature at a higher temperature, uh, peak must be lower, and then the area at the product here must be broader. So that is how you score it here. And then number two, with the reference of Boltzmann distribution, state and explain the effect of increasing temperature towards the rate of production. So uh, when you have a higher temperature, you have more molecule has energy greater than the activation energy. Therefore, you have more effective collision rate. Okay, so that is how you are going to explain. And then number three, using B. Chatelier principle, state and explain the effect of increasing temperature on the yield of ammonia. So if you look carefully, this process is an exothermic. So since forward reaction is exothermic, so when temperature increase, equilibrium shift to the left. So therefore, decrease the yield of ammonia. So uh, always remember, uh, there's one more point that you should also write in here, I forgot to add in. Uh, since forward reaction is exothermic, so always remember to write, okay? Okay, last but not least, as a pressure of 2.00 times 10 power 7 Pascal, 1.00 mole of nitrogen gas was mixed with 3.00 mole of hydrogen gas, final equilibrium was 0 0.300 mole of ammonia. So calculate the Kp of the system. So you should use the same method. N2 plus 3H2 give 20 h 3 calculate the mole at equilibrium. So since you have 0 0.150 of the ammonia is formed, uh, 0 0.300 so the ratio is 1 to 3 to 2 so you have positive 0 0.300 so the amount of the nitrogen use is 0 0.150 hydrogen use also 0 0.450 so at equilibrium you have 0 0.850 for nitrogen gas 2.55 for hydrogen and 0 0.300 for ammonia after that, you calculate the total mole. Total mole is 3.7. Then you calculate the partial pressure for nitrogen, hydrogen, and also ammonia. Then you express Kp. So Kp is equals to ammonia squared divided by nitrogen and hydrogen. Then that is how you get your Kp for the systems in here. Okay. So as I always tells you, whenever you are calculating Kp, please follow the steps that I shows you in here. It will guarantee you to get the highest possible marks. Okay. Okay, so I guess that is all for the objective session. We are going to continue later with the essay section. So I guess uh, that's all for our videos today. So I see you all in our next lesson. Okay, goodbye.